What's up guys, my name is Ace, and our Season 6 update has partially gone live for Black Ops Cold War, and this is something we normally see where all of the content isn't available yet for Season 6, However, we do have our weapon balancing update that did go live. So in today's video, we're going to be covering all of this weapon balancing, including some nerfs to the EM2, the Tech 9 and the Marshals, which I think a lot of Cold War players will be very happy to see. And diving right in, let's start it off with the EM2. The first thing they did with the EM2 is they reduced its maximum damage from 48 down to 42. What this means for the base version of the gun with no attachments is it's still going to take you four shots to kill to the body. However, Previously, it only required one single headshot mixed in with those body shots to get a three-shot kill with an amazing time to kill, whereas now you have to hit every bullet to the head if you want to get a three-shot kill. Additionally, for the base version of the gun, they increase the vertical recoil, but only on the first bullet that you fire. And when we look at the side by side here, you can definitely see there's that little bit of a jump after the first bullet. However, the EM2 without any attachments is still an incredibly accurate gun. It's one of the most accurate guns in the game, and that's really going to be its strong point going forward. It no longer has that ridiculous time to kill potential that you can easily achieve by just hitting one headshot. So now it's more of a slower killing, but insanely accurate assault rifle. Now it turns out the base version of the EM2 after the previous nerf it got, it was never really a big problem. The real problem was the EM2 with the Task Force Barrel. And what they did in the last patch to try and fix the Task Force Barrel is they reduced the fire rate from 535 rounds per minute down to 500 rounds per minute. They have since reverted that and instead, this new damage change that they've made impacts the Task Force Barrel much more than it impacted the base version of the gun. So pre-patch with the Task Force Barrel, we could get a three-shot kill to the body with the Task Force Barrel. And that was the big problem because at a three-shot kill, you have a significantly better time to kill potential than any other full auto gun in the game. Whereas now, post-patch, if you're using the Task Force Barrel, it's going to be a four-shot kill to the body However, we can still get a three shot kill if two of those bullets hit them in the head. So it's a little bit better in the headshot department compared to not using the task force barrel, but not by a large margin. And another thing is that recoil increase definitely affected the task force barrel more than the base version of the gun. When we look at the side by side here, it's a lot less predictable and harder to control after this update. And therefore, I can't say I'd even recommend using the Task Force Barrel anymore for the EM2. I think you're better off just going with the base version of the gun and having something that's extremely accurate and just play to those strengths. So in general, they really did hit the EM2 pretty hard with this update. And it went from being the best gun in the game with the Task Force Barrel down to, I would say, probably a mid to lower tier weapon. So that's the EM2. Next up, with the C58, they made an adjustment to the 60 round drum magazine attachment. And with this, they added a 12% horizontal recoil reduction and an 8% vertical recoil reduction. So they actually buffed that attachment for some reason, which just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever because the problem with the C58 has never been recoil. It's already an incredibly accurate gun. So this really doesn't change anything in my opinion. But after that, the Tech 9 did get some nerfs, and these were all handling nerfs. So the first thing is they reduced the aim down sight speed from 233 milliseconds down to 266 milliseconds. Then our sprint to fire speed was also slowed down very, very slightly. It's hardly even noticeable. And our weapon swap speed was also slowed down by a very small amount. Additionally, if you're using the burst attachment in the muzzle section, previously we got a 15% reduction to range when we use this attachment. Now we get a 33% reduction to our range. So our maximum damage range or our one burst kill range with the burst version of the Tech 9 used to be 17.27 meters and now it's 13.61 meters. So a fairly slight but noticeable change to our one burst kill range when using that attachment. And then just in general with the Tech 9, they have slowed it down a little bit. So I would say it's still a very solid and competitive weapon. They've just toned it down a bit from where it was. After that, we've got the KSP-45, and with this one, they reduced the headshot multiplier from 1.4 down to 1.33. And I did all the math on this. This doesn't change anything. This doesn't change the number of headshots required to get a kill or anything. So this is a completely negligible change here. And on top of this, they increase the amount of damage you get with the Task Force Barrel up to 8%. And again, I did the math on all of this, and I can't see any situations where this actually makes a noticeable difference. So in general, the KSP-45 is going to perform basically exactly the same as it's always performed. We see a really similar story with the LC-10. With this one, they also reduced that headshot multiplier from 1.4 down to 1.33. And again, when you look at the math of this, 
It takes the exact same number of headshots mixed in with body shots in order to get a kill. I literally can't find a single benefit to this, so these changes are just negligible. After that though, we do have a change to the nail gun, and with this, they increase the head and neck damage multiplier all the way up to two times, so it literally doubles your damage. And with this, now you can see here, it just requires one single shot to the head or neck combined with body shots at any range in order to reduce the number of shots to kill. Whereas previously, it was two to three shots to the head or the neck in order to change anything. So this is a noticeable buff to the nail gun. It's still gonna be a very specialized sort of weapon. It's not super versatile, but it is noticeably more powerful if you can land a headshot. Then when it comes to the Marshall, this one got some nerfs, and keep in mind, I didn't have any pre-patch testing with this whatsoever, so I'm basically just going to be reading the patch notes for this particular section. And with this, they reduced the maximum damage range from 5.08 meters down to 3.81 meters, so that's quite a noticeable change to that. Then they reduced your firing speed from 0.35 down to 0.366. They increase the range penalty that you get when you're using the Dragon's Breath attachment. Previously it was 8%, now they buff that all the way up to a 25% range penalty. So Dragon's Breath really got hit hard with this update. Especially when you consider the fact that the bonus damage from Dragon's Breath was also reduced beyond 6.6 .6 meters. And previously, the maximum bonus damage you'd get from Dragon's Breath was 40, and now it's 24. So they've really hit the Dragon's Breath rounds hard on the Marshals, and hopefully this keeps them in check because I've been seeing a ton of complaints about this. I haven't really been playing much Cold War lately, but I have been trying to keep up with things, and it seems like that has been one of the biggest complaints, so I'm glad to see that they've made some significant adjustments there. Now on top of this, for all of the shotguns, they have increased the effective damage range bonus on the Ranger barrel from 30% up to 33%, so a very, very minor change here. Then with the Howard 77, they added slightly longer visual shake after firing, and with the Street Sweeper, there's more dramatic visual and weapon movement when firing. So those are just visual changes. They don't affect the actual performance of the gun, but they are worth mentioning. And with that, that's pretty much it. Those are all of the weapon balancing changes that we got in Cold War's multiplayer with the Season 6 update. And overall, at least on paper, things are looking pretty good here. It looks like they hit the right things and actually nerfed them properly this time, especially the EM2. They finally got a proper nerf in place for that, and I love to see that. And now we'll just have to wait and see if the new weapons that are coming tomorrow will end up replacing the EM2 and Tech 9 as the new overpowered weapons, because it seems like Treyarch really likes to do that toward the end of their life cycle of their games, they really like just adding completely overpowered weapons, presumably to squeeze out every little bit of player retention from those players that like using overpowered guns at least. Now, of course, I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think about these changes? Do you think they were enough, or were you hoping to see some more weapon balancing changes? And if so, let me know what other changes you'd like to see. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.